Number nine is poor meeting execution and follow-up. Sometimes we see companies doing pretty much all the right things, but when it comes to the actual meeting, you know, that critical time when all the customers are getting together, they just butcher the entire effort. And just to make sure that we understand what does it take to create really a facilitation uh, driven type of a meeting, right? You need to do the meeting preparation and review. And in that you have specific elements such as preparing your executive team. One of the most difficult things that we need to do as an external consulting company is not dealing with disruptive members or members that are trying to be dominant. That's easy to handle. Our biggest challenge in meetings is handling your own executives during the meetings. That, that's the reality of it. You know, we, we had one meeting with a Fortune 100 company where the CEO started to talk about his yoga practice in the middle of the advisory board and Tai Chi and how everything works and, you know, for one minute, two minutes, five minutes, was going to 10 minutes. And you could see the members looking at each other. You could see his entire leadership team looking at each other. No one says anything. That's the biggest challenge that we have. How do you actually manage your own executives uh, when you really need to listen most of the time to the, to the members? Once you finish with the uh, reviewing the sessions, getting all the objectives, agreeing on the key questions that you see over here, uh, preparing the management team, that's a key part. How do you prepare the management team for the meeting, for having a successful meeting? Then you need to manage and facilitate the meeting. You, you need to make sure that all the members are engaged. If you hear a member that comes to a meeting and says, oh, I just want to be uh, you know, a sponge. I just want to suck it all in. I just want to listen. That's not good. You don't want to have members that are not active. So you need to make sure that everyone is participating, everyone is engaged, everyone is able to bring forth their opinions. And there's a certain number of people that after that you need to do breakout sessions. That number is 15. Beyond 15 members in an advisory board, it's impossible to get a real significant discussion because if you have 20 or 24 members on the advisory board and you have one topic and you want to make sure that everyone has a chance to speak up and each person speaks for two or three minutes, that's it. The session is over before you were even able to take the different threads of the conversation and create the analysis of the meeting. And then obviously you need to do the meeting summary. You know, I'm not going to go into how do you do it exactly, I'm just going to share a couple of examples here. The meeting summary is really a very powerful document if done correctly. So let's talk about the business insight reports. What you need to do when we have an advisory board meeting, and most of the advisory board meetings that we do are longer in term, we really believe in content. We only do content and process and methodology, by the way. We don't do events. We have experienced event professionals like Liz to do that. We believe that we can do certain things very well. We can do everything well. So we don't deal with the logistics, with the travel, with the food, just the meeting itself and engaging all the members and the entire process. So, if we have a two and a half days, that's usually what we do, two and a half days of content with our customers. You know, think about it, by the time it takes you to get all the customers together, are you, are you really gonna do it for half a day? The travel, the airfare, the cost of your executive's time, the preparation needed, if you do it, <laughs> do it right. So, two and a half days of content, and out of that two and a half days, we record all of our meetings, you end up with usually 40 or 50 pages of notes. Obviously, you're not taking the notes verbatim, but you end up with 40 or 50 notes. You need to take these 40 or 50 notes, these multiple threads of conversation, and condense it to 10 slides. That's it. 10 slides that summarize the essence of the meeting. Nobody is going to uh, look through 30 or 40 slides. And these 10 slides need to tell a story. You can see an example here. This is from uh, a work that we've done with one of our customers. This is a two-hour session that describes how a particular industry is at an inflection point, 
there are certain capabilities that need to happen and it describes where the inflection point is. And it has a couple of axes, customer value and efficiency and productivity. So we took a two hour session and we created one diagram out of that two hour session. So the key is to take the information, condense the information, visualize the information as much as possible. We are a visual society. So if you're trying to visualize the information, you will be better off in terms of presenting it back to your company and to the members. Obviously, the visual side is very important, creating the right look and feel, making it look like uh, an um, annual report or uh, something that your corporate marketing department would do. You need to put that level of care. Again, what Iron Mountain did is, is a tremendous uh, example. And obviously making sure that you capture all the feedback from the members year over year. You do all the analytics, you do all the comparisons right at the meeting insight and reports.